The Lives of the Saints, by the Rev. Dalvin Butler, taken from the 4th edition, published in 1954. August 23rd, St. Philip Beniti. St. Philip Beniti, or Benizzi, the principal ornament and propagator of the religious order of the Servites in Italy, was descended of the noble family of Benizzi in Florence, and a native of that city. His virtuous parents were well persuaded that the right or wrong state of human nature depends as necessarily upon the education of children as that of a plant upon proper culture, and that the whole of of this art consists not only in strengthening the body by suitable exercise and opening and improving the faculties of the mind by proper studies, but above all by forming in youth strong and lasting habits and inspiring them with the most noble sentiments of all virtues. Through their care, assisted by a special grace, Philip preserved his soul untainted by vice and the world, and daily advanced in the fear of God. Having gone through the studies of humanity in his own country, he was sent to Paris to apply himself to the study of medicine, in which charity was his motive. From Paris he removed to Padua, where he pursued the same studies and took the degree of doctor, which then was the same in that faculty as in arts. After his return to Florence, he took some time to deliberate within himself what course to steer, earnestly begging God to direct him into the path in which he should most perfectly fulfill his divine will. The religious order of Servites, or servants of God, under the special patronage of the Blessed Virgin, had been instituted in that country fifteen years before. Seven very rich merchants of Florence had laid the foundation of this institute, having by mutual agreement retired to Monte Senario, six miles from that city. They lived there in little cells, something like the hermits of Camadoli, possessing nothing but in common, and professing obedience to Bonfilio Monaldi, whom they chose superior. The austerities which they practiced were exceedingly great, and they lived in a great measure of on alms. Bonfilio Monaldi, the first superior of this fervent company, at the request of certain pious persons, founded a small convent near one of the gates of Florence, with a chapel under the title of the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin. St. Philip, happening to hear Mass in this chapel on Thursday in Easter week, was strongly affected with the words of the Holy Ghost to the deacon Philip, which were read in the epistle of that day, Draw near, and join thyself to the chariot. His name being Philip, he applied to himself these words of the Holy Ghost as an invitation to put himself under the patronage of the Blessed Virgin in that order. The night following he seemed to himself in a dream or vision to be in a vast wilderness, representing the world, full of precipices, rocks, flint stones, briars, snares, and venomous serpents, so that he did not see how it was possible for him to escape so many dangers. Whilst he was in the utmost dread and consternation, he thought he beheld the Blessed Virgin seated in a chariot, calling him to this new order. The next day, Philip resolved his mind that great watchfulness and an extraordinary grace are requisite to discover every lurking rock or sand in the course of life in the world, and he was persuaded that God called him to this order, established under the patronage of his mother as to a place of refuge. Accordingly, he repaired to the little chapel where he had heard Mass, and was admitted by F. Bonfilio in the habit to in quality of lay brother, that state being more agreeable to his humility." He made his religious vows on the 8th of September in 1233, and was sent by the, his superior to Monte Scenario, there to work at every kind of hard country labor. The saint cheerfully applied himself to it in a perfect spirit of penance, but accompanied his work with constant recollection and fervent prayer, and all his spare hours he devoted to this holy exercise in a, in a little cave behind the church, where, inebriated with heavenly delights and in ecstasies of divine love, he often forgot the care which he owed to his body. He most industriously concealed his learning and talents till they were at length discovered. In the meantime, those who conversed with him admired the heavenly prudence and light with which he spoke on spiritual things. He was charged with the care of a new convent that was founded at Siena, where he undesignedly displayed his abilities in a discourse on certain controverted points in presence of two learned Dominicans and others, to the great astonishment of those that heard him. The superiors of his order were hereupon engaged by others to draw this bright light from under the bushel and to place it on the candlestick. Having therefore obtained a dispensation of his holiness, they took care to have him promoted to holy orders, though nothing but their absolute command could exhort the humble saint's consent to such a step. He was soon after made definitor, then assistant to the general, and in 1267 the fifth general of his order. Upon the death of Clement IV, the cardinals assembled at Viterbo began to cast their eyes on him to raise him to the apostolic chair. Having intelligence of this design, in the greatest alarm, he retired into the mountains with only one religious companion, and lay concealed there till Gregory X was chosen. 
he rejoiced to find in this retreat an opportunity of redoubling the macerations of his body and giving himself up to the sweet exercise of heavenly contemplation. All this time he lived chiefly on dry herbs and drank at a fountain, since esteemed miraculous, and called St. Philip's Bath, situate on a mountain named Montagnat. He returned from the desert glowing with holy zeal to kindle in the hearts of Christians the fire of divine love. After preaching in many parts of Italy, he appointed the vicar general there to govern his order, and with two religious companions undertook an extensive mission, preaching with great fruit at Avignon, Toulouse, Paris, and in other great cities in France, also in Flanders, Friesland, Saxony, and higher Germany. After two years' absence, he came back to hold the general chapter of his order at Borgo in 1274, in which he used all his endeavors to be released from the burden of his generalship, but was so far from being heard that he was confirmed in that dignity for life. Indeed, no one was more worthy of it than he who most sincerely judged himself to be, of all persons living, the most unworthy. In the same year he repaired to the Second General Council of Lyon, from which he obtained the confirmation of his order, Pope Gregory X presiding there in person. The saint announced the word of God wherever he came, and had an extraordinary talent in converting sinners, and in reconciling those that were at variance. Italy was at that time horribly divided by intestine discords and hereditary factions particularly those of, of the Guelphs and Ghibellines. Holy men often sought to apply remedies to these quarrels, which had a happy effect upon some, but in many these discords, like a wound ill-cured, broke out again with worse symptoms than ever. St. Philip wonderfully pacified the factions, when they were ready to tear each other to pieces at Pistoia and in many other places. He succeeded at length also at Farli, but not without first exposing himself to many dangers. The seditious insulted and beat him in every part of the city, but his invincible patience at length disarmed their fury and vanquished them. St. Peregrinus Laciozzi, who was their ringleader and had himself struck the saint, was so powerfully moved by the example of his meekness and sanctity that he threw himself at his feet and with many tears begged his pardon and prayers. Being become a perfect model of penitence, he was received by him into the order of servites at Siena and continued his penance in sackcloth and ashes to his happy death in the 80th year of his age. So evident were his miracles and other tokens of his heroic sanctity and perseverance that he was canonized by Benedict the Thirteenth in 1726. St. Philip made the sanctification of his religious brethren the primary object of his zeal, as it was the first part of his charge. Nor was he a stranger to the maxim, with the zealous reformer of La Trappe so strenuously inculcated, that a, that a religious community in which regular discipline is enervated in, 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 and those who profess the order are strangers to its true spirit is not a harbor or place of refuge, but a shipwreck of souls. Scarce could a saint be able to resist such a torrent of examples or the poison of such an error in which, as in a pest house, everyone is confined. The gross crimes of the world are shut out, the want of the religious spirits and the ne neglect of the particular duties of that heroic state are enough to damn souls. To preserve his family from so fatal a misfortune, our saint never ceased to watch and pray. Judging at length by the decay of his health that the end of his life drew near, he set out to make the visitation of the convents of his order at Florence, Siena, Perugia, and other places. Arriving at Todi, he went straight to the altar of Our Lady, and falling prostrate on the ground, prayed with great fervor, and said, This is the place of my rest forever. The day following, he mo made a moving sermon on the glory of the blessed. His disorder manifested itself by a sharp fever on the feast of the Assumption of the Mother of God. The time of his sickness he employed in admirable sentiments of compunction, and on the octave day fa falling into his agony, he called for his book, by which word he usually meant his crucifix, and, devoutly contemplating it, calmly expired. To give place to the octave of the Assumption, his feast is kept on the following day, the 23rd of the month. He was canonized by Clement X in 1671, but the bull was only published by Benedict XIII in 1724.